You know, I've had a, an experience at my cabin involving invisibility. Well, we had a lot of them because the cats could see, but we could not see. And that was very nerve wracking at times because we'd have the feeling that there was something in the house and the cats would all be watching it. And, and they, at times they would hiss at it. And you know, when your cats are hissing at something you can't see, it's concerning. Um, <laughs> in any case, one time we had a situation, there was a filmmaker and his wife in the living room on the convertible couch, and a whole complex experience unfolded that night that started with him seeing a large-headed man peering at him over the edge of, uh, from the edge of the bed and startled him. Now, I've talked about this experience many times. People in two other bedrooms had uh, close encounters with a big-eyed being, uh, and when he reacted to it with fear, it turned into the head of a hawk. That is to say, it shape-shifted as a defense mechanism right. and then disappeared before his eyes. Right. Now, the rest of that then happened. Then at the, in the early morning, just at dawn, my son and I are work, walking up from where we've been camping in the woods because the whole house was filled with people and his bedroom was filled with people. And so I was camping out with him. And what we see is this, a translucent figure comes down the front deck, the front porch, passes before our eyes down the deck and then goes off into the woods behind the house, moving like this very quickly around the trees, meaning it was solid enough to where it could not do things like move through trees. Now, at the same time, in the living room, the uh, <coughs> filmmaker and his wife are affected by a burst of heat so intense that they think the bed is on fire and they leap out of bed. And when we walk into the room, they're standing there in, in their bed clothes in a state of real disturbance and shock. How bizarre. Now, I asked a physicist about all of this, a physicist who was in a position to know something about our own experiments with invisibility. And he said this, in order to create invisibility as we understand it, you have to be able to bend light. Right. And you bend light with a powerful, mag uh, not mag excuse me, gra gravity, gravity field. Yeah. And in order to create a powerful gravity field, you have to have a lot of energy. And he said what happened, he thought, was that whatever was there had such a device. And the reason there was so much heat expelled as it left the house was because it was releasing enough of that energy for whatever reason to make it, enable it to move quickly out of the house, which it did. And that was the heat that they felt. So what we're looking at here, fascinatingly enough, is not some vague mystery, but an actual technology in operation that we have seen at least the outlines of in that experience. You know what we're talking about right now? We're talking about biblical text. Mm -hmm. We're talking about history that has been repeated over and over again. Hawk, right. reptilian, right. light beings, Garbus heat. Of light. Yeah. You know, all of this. Rods. Uh, the me, rods uh, that are the neutralizing gravitational technology. That's what I've been told by a physicist, that they know that from Samaria, those rods, the ones that are in limestone, that have been seen in the hands of greys and others, mm -hmm. the rods are yeah. what can point and do neutralizing gravity. Hmm. Well, I wanted to ask you, William, when you're listening to reptilians, right. hawk face beings, right. heat, light, invisibility. Yeah. This has just been repeated over and over again angels. throughout they're, history. We're talking about angels. Right. Because there are eyewitness accounts in the Gnostic Gospels that the angels have the ability to shape shift. They have visages of vipers. They have multicolored bodies. They rise up in the air like whirlwinds. And so sometimes I think uh, when you're talking about reptilians, they could well be reptilians. I'm with Whitley. I don't know if they exist or not. I've never encountered one. I've been called one. I don't feel reptilian. <laughs> you, you're reptilian. Yes, you're reptilian. You're reptilian. I have been called one. <laughs> uh, but I do know that these accounts exist and that it could be a, 
a, a, a small fragment. It's like watching a whole movie and they're describing one frame of the whole film and saying, this is the film. It's not. There's a whole backstory and there's more to come after that. And so I think we have to be at least open to the idea that these are eyewitness accounts. The horse the absolutely horse saw that. The horse yeah. reacted and the woman reacted. But maybe there was more. Maybe if uh, she continued the experience, she'd find, yeah, it, it suddenly it shifted then into a humanoid-looking being with a rainbow-colored garment on, and then it uh, sh shape-shifted again, rose up in a whirlwind, and we, we don't know the whole story. I uh, think we forget that we've only had science in our civilization for a couple of hundred years. 300 Be max, yeah. Before that, yeah, yeah. people were very used to the fact that they didn't really understand everything around them. Right. And then we get into this idea that, oh, no, no, we've got this figured out. We know the method. And so over the last century, all of us grew up in this world where we're told by all of the smart people around us, ah, no more mysteries. Right. We understand how the universe works. Right. These are the rules. But you know what? We don't really have all the rules. There, there's, there are right. limits to we what have we're none. able to understand. <laughs> right. Well, we do. I think we're figuring we that out. Some rules. We, yes, yeah. we do. We definitely do. But we don't have them all.